guys. Towards the end of Catching for Cash, you'll have noticed after the afternoon session we tend to get into fisheries and out within about five, four, five, six casts. Now, there was a fly to that and before the challenge it said to my friend Willie that this is going to be the fly that might save the day. Jokingly named it Davy's Blank Buster. Now, I'll show you how to tie the pattern. Someone somewhere is going to say, oh, that was invented by Joe Bloggs in 1995 in such and such competition. I don't really care because I haven't seen it before. So I'll let you send a little secret, show you how it's tied, and good luck fishing with it. Uh, at last message I had from Willie last night was that he had been struggling on a local fishery, put it on for one last cast and caught. And that was pretty much how we got through the last five stages of catching for cash. So, how do you fish it? Well, I per I personally prefer to fish at the end of a long leader in an intermediate line or a floating line, single fly pattern. I designed it with the idea that a normal damsel, yeah, it'll do the trick with some fish, but other fish are still quite wary. You know, they, they need some, some more of a stimulant to get them to take. For me, I like the contrast in colour. A nice hot head beating a damsel always seems to do the trick. You know, it's up for me, it's more effective than gold, but again, some places you go gold could be even better. Again, I I added some rubber legs to the tail, a bit more movement, again, more contrast off the olive background. But I put two front facing legs, and people sort of wonder, well, what's the point in this? Why not tie them back? I kind of like the idea that they move like this and uh, a bit more movement a bit more vibration some more something that's going to initiate the, the fish's trigger point and provoke it to take so i'm going to introduce you to a fly that willie has named davy's blank buster so here goes first things first i like to use size eight vineyard heavyweight wet fly osprey hooks fantastic very, very, very strong. There we go. Put that there till I find everything else. Got a couple of 3.2 hothead beads. Now, you can be as big or as small as you would like. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Okay. You want to put the hothead bead over the top the hook there you go put that in there give it a couple of wrap arounds and a small snip there okay right we'll take that down to the it's the end of the hook Doesn't really need to be too meticulous for making it neat, but if you're like me, you're a bit OCD. Now, let's see if we can get into here. Some of the Vineyard Marabou Strung Bloods, Dark Olive. I prefer these because they seem to be very plentiful, as you can see. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck. So let's try and tie some in. Don't tie it too long because if you tie it too long, the fish are just going to nip the tail. So if you can get a, a nice, just not much there. Not off that. Tighten that in there. Some people say that's a terrible waste, but I say this is the way I tie it. Okay, let's get some more. I want a really good tail. Again, let's try the same again. There, tie it in. OK, 
Okay, so now you have a fairly decent tail to your damsel. Now, here's the key bit. Rubber legs. Okay. So if you want to take one off there, I don't even know what make these are. I know I think I got them off AMC Anglin a long time ago. But I'll show you here. Now you don't want them to be longer than the tail, so maybe just a bit short. Okay, bring that into there. Let's get that size right. Okay, just a bit shorter than the tail. If you can see that there. Let's try and keep that neat. Good trick is to hold it to the sides of the body here. You'll see why very soon. Tie that right up. Okay, and we'll bring it back down. Okay. Next bit. I love this stuff. It's the Vineyard Straggle Fritz UV. I uh, sometimes I use cinnamon, sometimes I use olive, but it can't be the bit of olive. This is the best bit for me. So if you cut a decent strand of that, I'm probably being over generous here for the video, but just enough to take you round the wrap of the fly. So you know, tie that in, secure that. And there you go. Bring that up to the top. So yeah, just roll, wrap that around the body. Fear to stroke back some of the fibers. You don't want to waste that straggle. Stroke back, stroke back, stroke back. I know a lot of people like to give it a wrap of thread all the way. No, this is the way it had. <laughs> Again, give it lots of straggle and maybe one more, okay. Let's secure that near the head. Okay. And you'll find the loop that you created with the rubber legs. You'll find the benefit of that now because if I do that, now I have two front facing legs. Remember I said the whoa, 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 whoa effect to the water? Here it is. So when you're pulling that through the water, a lot of movement. Now it will move back in the water, but when it stops, when you bring your fly through the water, it'll be like that. When it stops, it flicks out again, in, out. Every retrieve, okay? So there's a lot of movement in this fly. Just secure that there. Give that a whip finish. Two and three. And there you have it. Davies Blank Buster Damsel perspective there. Trust me, most deadly fly I think I've ever had in my box. So hope you enjoy. That's the pattern for Davies Blank Buster Damsel and good luck. Mm -hmm.